So when is a charger not a charger? When it's for an EV, because in this case, they just mean a box of relays. The actual charger is within the vehicle. So what does this box of relays actually do? Well, in the first case, it checks the safety of the connection to the car through the protective earth. And in the second case, it advertises the capacity of the supply so the charger knows just how much it can take. All this is communicated through the small PP and CP pins on this Type 2 connector. And that brings us to the point of this story, the BMW flexible charger. Now, BMW sell three cables for this charger, and it means they can sell you an EV vehicle that will charge with anything that you've got at home. 13 amp plug top, 16 amp commando, or three phase. The difference between these cables is two resistors. Each cable has a different pair of values, and that's how the relay box knows to advertise the right rate to the EV. Now, 23 years ago, when this garage was built, it was given a 32 amp supply, which seemed pretty generous at the time, but perhaps not enough for a bunch of EVs. And here's the issue. You've just returned from a long drive, you're low on charge, and you need to go on holiday tomorrow. If you take the standard BMW approach, that's two kilowatts. And with a 77 kilowatt hour battery, 10 hours gives you just 26%. Now you could set the chargers both to four kilowatts, but then you run the risk that you charge both cars together trip the 32 amp breaker and then you end up in a situation where you've got both cars not charged and none of the doors work. The only way around it is to enter through the side door, disconnect the cars, reset the breakers, take all of the garage doors through their whole range of travel to reset them, then decide which car is the most important to charge, and then the other one may have to go down to a local fast charger where it will be charged more than one C, which will reduce the lifetime of the battery a little bit, reduce the resale value of the car, and lead to general despondency. We can use what we've learnt here and build a cable vaker. Now, it's hardly a turbo encabulator, but frankly, it's more useful. We can organise a 25k linear potentiometer driven by an RC servo to fake out those values that we found on the three BMW cables. Now we can charge at one, two and four kilowatts respectively. That means we can have one car charging at four kilowatts and the other car charging at either one or two kilowatts. We won't trip the 32 amp breaker and we've still got spare capacity for all the other garage appliances. 4 kilowatts at 10 hours is enough for 52% charge, which is about 125 miles. At 12 hours, that's 62%, which is 150 miles, and by that I mean 150 miles in the cold with a 25 mile margin. So, here it is, in its full glory. Here's the servo, which is fully electrically isolated from any of the other components, so there's no internal modifications to the BMW unit. That means we're good on safety and we're good on warranty. Here we go. Let's plug this in. And this car is charging at four kilowatts, but it could just as equally be charging at one or two kilowatts. And that might be useful for say solar because that's got a really variable output. Now, when we started this project, we found a similar box that was available for 1199 pounds. And it nearly did what we wanted. And I say nearly because we would still have to do the programming work between two of those boxes to make sure that when one was high, the other one was low. When I was out getting some 25mm glands for these, I noticed that Podpoint had their box on offer for $4.99. And to put that in some perspective, these two flexible chargers I bought from eBay at £50 and £90 respectively. BMW charge 
132 pounds just for the mains cable part of this. So anyway, there you are, and there it was, a flexible charger made into a flexible, flexible relay box.